Hello, I'm Jerry Stewart with another episode of Common Sense. Did you know today, October the 5th, is National Take Your Bible to School Day? Did you know that? Kelly and I just found that out a couple of days ago, and quite frankly, I didn't know it was actually allowed. I didn't know you could bring your Bible to school. I thought that Madeline Murray O'Hare and a lot of her anti-Bible, anti-Godly uh, folks back in the 70s and 80s had somehow caused our Congress to block that from happening. But today, all across America, they say that hundreds of thousands of children are bringing their Bibles to school. Wow. Now, as you know, when our founding fathers wrote the Constitution, they were trying to set an order, if you will, in our country, and they were trying to set it up in such a way as that our country not just would run smoothly, but that the citizens would have certain rights. Now, did you know that those representatives who penned the Constitution, after they penned it and passed it, they would not sign it into law until, get this, until something else was added. The something else that was added was what we call the Bill of Rights. It was the first ten amendments to the Constitution. And they wanted to make sure, before they put the Constitution into action, that these Bill of Rights were in the Constitution and could not be taken away from us. Did you know that? Now, so many people today, when they talk about the Bill of Rights, the one that they always want to mention is freedom of speech. Now, you may not know this, but the reason why our founding fathers wanted to make sure that there was freedom of speech is because back when the Brits were in charge and the, Brit the British government was was leading us and controlling us, you weren't allowed to go out on a corner and just start expressing your feelings. If they were against the government or against something in the area that the government didn't like, you could be arrested. So our founding fathers wanted to make sure that that would never happen again. And by the way, they never said anything about tearing down statues and breaking windows and breaking the law. That's not anywhere in there. That's not anywhere in freedom of expression, okay? Just so you'll know that. But interestingly enough, people talk about the freedom of speech being the First Amendment, and therefore it's got to be the most important amendment because it's first. That kind of makes sense to me, but did you know there's something in the First Amendment that comes before freedom of speech? Let me read it to you. Amendment 1. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. Then, after that, it begins to talk about the abridging of freedom of speech or the press, the right of the people to assembly peaceably. So the truth is, if you were going to look at the order of importance our Founding Fathers believed that freedom of religion was the most important thing. Now, as I mentioned a little earlier, somewhere along the way, in the 70s or 80s, a woman by the name of Madeline Murray O'Hare, she was able to get the Supreme Court to determine that there should not be any religion in public schools and that our Founding Fathers, that was their intent in what they said. Now the truth is this, England had a, well, kind of like a state-sponsored church. It was the church of their country called the Church of England. And if you did not follow and attend and be a part of the Church of England, there are instances where you could actually get in trouble by not following and uh, supporting that church. So our founding fathers wanted to make sure that there would never be a state-run religion 
that people were forced to participate in. Somewhere along the way, somebody turned it upside down and made it the other way. So it's not that we're trying to keep the state out of the church business. They're saying that they were trying to keep the church out of the state business. Absolutely wrong. Now, you doubt me? Let me give you a, a little more information. The fellow who was given the, um, the authorship of this first part of this First Amendment was a fellow by the name of Fisher Ames. I don't know if you can see or not, but I've, I've got a picture of him up here on the screen. And uh, Fisher Ames was a congressman back in 1791, and he was from the state of Massachusetts. And he was the one who actually authored this part of the First Amendment. You say, well, it's clear. He didn't want there to be any church activity in anything that was the public. Really? Well, let me give you another little piece of information. In that same year that he penned the First Amendment to our Constitution, in a magazine called the Palladium Magazine, September the 20th, he wrote these words. We have a dangerous trend beginning to take place in our education. We're starting to put more and more textbooks into our schools. We've become accustomed of late of putting little books into the hands of children containing fables and moral lessons. We're spending less and less time in the classroom on the Bible. Now get this, and the Bible should be, this is Fisher Ames' words, the Bible should be the principal text in our schools. The Bible states that these great moral lessons, states these great moral lessons better than any other man-made book. Now, unless two plus two is not four anymore, uh, you know, the whole new math thing, if two plus two is still four, then the man who gave this article through this magazine saying that the Bible should be the number one text in our schools because it's the most powerful single book to give the children the lessons of life and the moral lessons that they need to know, then he also very, very clearly did not intend in that part of the First Amendment to say that there should be no religion in the public schools. We have been fed, folks, we have been fed a huge bill of goods that are not true. Not true. So when someone tries to give you the double talk about how there's not supposed to be any religion or the Bible in school because that's what the Founding Fathers said, not true. Now, what are we to do if we believe that the Bible should be in our schools? Well, according to today, you can't be stopped from bringing your Bible to schools. But do we bring it to the school and use it like a, like a hammer? Or do we use it as a, a bully pulpit? No. We bring our Bible, we read God's Word and hide it in our hearts so that He can lead us and guide us in the way that we should act in school, the way we should talk in school, the way we should witness in school. Now, I realize there's a tremendous pressure everywhere we go when we stand up for the Lord. But, you know, that's what he said would happen. And the main thing I wanted to make clear to you today is this common sense truth that our founding fathers did believe that the Bible should be in our schools. Our founding fathers did believe that the Bible should be a book that was read by our children to give powerful moral lessons. Now, if you like this, give me a like, thumbs up. If you don't like it, well, give me a thumbs down. But either way, please give 
a response, a reply. As you can see, I leave these up for other people to read. And I would really, really love if you would subscribe to this site. There's a box down below, uh, and just uh, check the box. Now, when you do that, then we want to get an email from you that tells us that you have subscribed. And then what I'm going to do for absolutely free, when you subscribe, I will give I will give you where you can go to get a free instant download of the full patriotic radio program that I did where I talked about the Bill of Rights. Let's be forearmed, forewarned. Let us love our nation with all of our heart. Let us not be angry with people who disagree with us. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for the wisdom to know how to speak correctly in the things that we do talk about. Let us not budge. It was President Abraham Lincoln who said, when you know what's right, he said, stand there. And until someone can prove otherwise, you stand and do not move. Once again, thanks so much for coming to my site for another Common Sense episode. God bless you. See you again soon. Bye-bye.